Hey guys, it's Danny. Today we are making all sorts of updates, not only on orchids, but also what I've been up to in the plant room, greenhouse. I don't even know how to call it anymore because I will have a lot of plants in this room. And definitely it is not a greenhouse. So what you see in front of you is my latest creation, which I will talk more about on my second channel, Miss Orchid Girl Houseplants. Links in description if you didn't know about it, now you know. This is a sort of place where my birds cannot reach, where I can keep my plants, which are not very friendly to pets. They're rather poisonous actually to pets. And this is a rather famous IKEA cabinet, so I will talk about it on my second channel. But except for this, I actually have a lot of plants for the greenhouse in general. I want to move things around, add things, and I need the help of other people. And you know how it is. They have a life too, they have a schedule too, so yeah, I don't know what I'm gonna finish. Hopefully soon a tour will come, so until then, please excuse the kind of messy look of the greenhouse or the filming table, which by the way, I changed. It's gonna be a little weird for a while and I don't know exactly where I'm gonna film, so videos will be a little different. But yeah, that's what I'm up to. Today I'm gonna show you some orchids we didn't see in a while, but also some things that I'm testing or trying out. So with that said, let's start with, I don't know, maybe the tallest Cattleya ever. Before we start today's video, I want to make a quick announcement. I did already contact the winners of our recent giveaway, but I have a few of you guys who didn't respond to my reply. And here you are. If you are watching this video, go back to the giveaway video and check out my reply to your comment. I tell you there what you need to do, so please reply within a few days because if you don't reply this week, I will have to choose other winners. Anyway, congratulations to all the winners, I will try to give you your prizes as soon as I can and with that said, on with the video. And here she is, this is the Lelia Latona, currently I'm sure she's a cat Lelia Latona because the parents are the former Lelia purpurata and the Cinnabarina. Even the purpurata is quite a big orchid, but this is tall. And I call her the tallest orchid ever because she is the tallest orchid ever in my collection. Let's do a quick measurement here. 71 centimeters tall. I'll be sure to put the equivalent in inches on the screen for you because I really have no idea how much that is, but she really is tall. Certainly the tallest Calia in my collection. Now, when I received it, it really didn't look very, very good. I do believe it didn't have many roots, if at all. I did film it, so I'll put the link to that video in the description. But ever since then, she did really, really well. I was a little nervous because one of the parents, the purpurata, is actually a pretty seasonal grower as well, in the sense that it creates new growth in particular seasons, it blooms in particular seasons, which I do believe this one will do as well. It puts out roots in particular season, which was the most important thing. Since one of you asked about my Cat Lea Mossier, I'll do a little bit of an update on that one as well. I don't have it anymore, I lost it. And this is because last year we had a storm, she fell out of her pot, I disturbed the roots or the storm disturbed the roots. And guess what, it was summertime and that type of work it produces roots in the spring. And from summer to spring, it completely depleted itself. It did not want to put out roots because that's the nature of that species. And the purpurata is pretty much the same. Maybe not as strict as the Mosier, which I do believe is a very strict orchid when it comes to growth pattern, but certainly the purpurata is very similar, so I was a little nervous with this one because it was rootless. Lucky for me, it did put out roots at some point and I don't even have much of a setback. I do have a little bit we can see. These are the first growths in my care and compared to the older growths, yes, there is a big difference. But I do believe the new growths this year will pretty much be as big as the older ones. And certainly I'm hoping for flowers. As you can see, the older growths produced sheets as well. And in one of them, which was this one, I do believe I saw something forming, but in the end, nothing actually formed. Will it actually bloom from the older canes? It is very possible, so definitely I'm not gonna go ahead and cut the sheets or anything of the sorts, but I do have brand new sheets on the new growths and they look spectacular. The orchid looks very hydrated. There are roots. The problem is, and I actually wanted to show you the roots, but look at this. She's completely attached to the pot and I'm thinking there's really no point in damaging the roots that attach to the pot. All orchids do that, but with this one, since it did have that history of not being fully rooted about a year ago or a year and a half ago, I don't want to disturb it much. 
I see roots, I see the orchid is hydrated, there is no reason for me to just go in and break the roots that attach to the pot. I will do so when it's time to repot next year, not this year. But there we go, the Latona is doing great and the flowers should be spectacular on this one. If you Google it, you'll see what I mean. I do believe it blooms once a year though. But who knows, maybe next spring we're gonna have really pretty flowers. She is doing great though, taking up a lot of space, but I think she's worth it. She's very majestic. Next up here, we have some self-watering pots. Now, next year, it will be time to repot my Cattleya orchids as part of maintenance, not because I wanna change something like I usually do, but it's part of maintenance. They are currently in organic medium, so they need repotting every two years or so with this particular medium that I find available, which is not as long lasting as Orchiara. Long story short, I need to repot them. But here's the thing, as much as everything went okay, I think it can actually go a little bit better. Cattleyas are those types of orchids which I grow mainly outside on the terrace in the summertime in 40 degrees Celsius. Things get very, very dry. I water them sometimes in the fullness of summer every two days, which, you know, it's not fun. Sometimes I do resort to the hose and I just water them down with the tap water. Sometimes I don't fertilize them because it's just another chore. Sometimes it gets a little bit hard and I think I can fix that. So what I'm testing this year in advance, just so I don't have any surprises like I always do, again, I'm testing some self-watering pots. Now, these are some pots which I actually like. A long time ago, I purchased a self-watering pot from Wish, which wasn't the greatest quality. It wasn't what I liked. It wasn't a wicking pot. It had those cones. So practically it was always kind of sitting in water. I didn't like it at all. In fact, I gave it away, I do believe. I don't even have it anymore. But the only thing that I truly liked about that pot was this system of showing you how much water you have in the reservoir. I much more prefer something like this than a gauge which may or may not get stuck. That can happen as well. Sometimes I do get gauges even on the lechuzas stuck on the maximum and that always freaks me out and as much as I do really like the lechuzas, the plastic is very high quality, very durable. I really like this better. And considering that I have a massive, at this point, collection of Cattleya orchids, I was looking for something fairly cheaper than the Lechuzas, and I found these guys on Amazon. I will link you to them down below in the description. Actually, I will link you to my Amazon store. It is an affiliate store, so do read my disclaimer there if you wanna check them out. I will make a separate video on them, testing them out. There are some pros and cons, like with everything. I don't know if everybody will enjoy these, to be honest, and they have something that I don't trust this type of wick. They say it's cotton, so no. If you don't wanna have rotten wicks, don't use this wick. I don't know if it's cotton, it's not very absorbent. Anyway, these are details. But I'm already trying it out with some cattleyas that I needed to repot into something bigger anyway, such as this little cattleya right here. As you can see, I'm using my own wick that I talked about in my African Violet video. I'll talk more about it in the video regarding these pots as well. But I think they're quite pretty. They're not very flashy. They don't jump in your eye when you see them. They have a sort of buttery muted whitish color and these colors again are muted. I do have to say I like this color scheme. They currently have a green rimmed, if you will, pot, an orange one and a brown one. So it doesn't really distract from the plant itself. It's kind of muted. It kind of goes with my aesthetic. And the reason why I was so adamant in a wick system is because I don't want to use the reservoir or the wicking system all the time. I want to use it in the summertime. I want to fill the reservoir if possible and water them once a year. Well, not really, but you get my point. In summertime water disappears, but in winter it doesn't. So I don't wanna use this as a self-watering pot in the winter. I can use it as a normal pot or just put a tiny, tiny, tiny little bit of water in the reservoir and just let the pot even itself out. Now with the other pot, and please excuse my show is eats when I film. So with the other pot, which had those cones, that was impossible. Those cones always, always set in water and it was always just a little bit too wet for me. And it turns out it didn't actually work that great. I seem to always have more success with a wicking type of pot than with those cone pots. In small setups, in big setups, 
it's a different story. With soil, again, it seems to be a different story, but with moss and bark, you know, my typical mix, the wicking system works a lot, a lot better. Moss tends to be super, super soggy if you put it in water. I don't want to put it in water. I just wanted to have contact with the water through a wick. So, so far so good with these. I'm testing them a year in advance. If I like them, I might actually switch my Cattleya collection into something like this, which I know for some of you will sound kind of crazy because Cattleyas are not known to be very thirsty orchids. Well, when you live where I live, they are. <laughs> and they're actually suffering, as you will probably see with some other Cattleyas in the future. With some of them, I just couldn't fulfill their watering needs. So I need something like this. But yeah, I'm really excited to try them out. Sally, though, they only have two sizes. This, which is a 14 centimeter, I believe. You'll see the details on the website. And this, which is a 10 centimeter width. They don't have bigger, which is a shame, but it's okay. I have the repot me pots. Maybe I can transform them into some self-watering systems. They also have a vent here, which is great with self-watering. I actually discovered it's a lot, a lot better to have vents. Things don't get stinky and well prone to molds and stuff. If you have an air vent to the reservoir, that's one little drawback that the lechuza or some lechuzas have. When I open out that reservoir, it stinks and it doesn't make me feel very good. But with these guys, you don't get that. The downside to this is if the reservoir doesn't go down, if you never let it completely dry out, you might have some mosquito larvae in here. So I'm not gonna do that. I'm gonna completely let it dry out. So there's no danger of that. But yeah, nothing is perfect yet again. Um, but I do believe I like these pots. Enough blabbing about the pots though. Let's move on to something else. Next up, here is my Grammatophyllum scriptum. Some of you really wanted to see it for a long time. There he is. He's a big guy, barely fits in my little set up here, which is not my typical filming table. I think I'm gonna buy a new one. Anyway, I digress yet again. Here he is. He's growing out of his pot soon. The pot is full of roots. I need to repot him. Oh, you didn't actually see any of that. <laughs> Look at the root system. Can you tell how big it is? It's huge. And the orchid is huge as well. So he will need some repotting. I'm not entirely sure when to do it. If I wait for spring, this new growth will completely grow out of its pot. I might just go ahead and repot it now since I just received those big pots from Repot Me. This is actually a Repot Me pot, but it's the six inch, which is about 15 centimeters. So yeah, the 18 inches one is almost 20 centimeters, I believe. So it will be a big change. Hold up. I actually have the pots around. Let's, let's see how big of a difference. I mean, yeah, this is a much more suited pot. But yeah, since you guys wanted to see him, there he is. He's residing outside, did not bloom so far, which is fairly weird. But then again, I could have done a much better job at watering. He's a thirsty, thirsty orchid. And in the past, you can see I have some leaf tip dieback on the very, very old growths right there. I don't know if these growths were here when I received it. And now that I look at it, that growth is so old, it might have actually arrived with the damage. I really, really don't remember. Let's just say I did the damage. So yeah, it's very hard to stay on top of watering with this guy. And I was considering some sort of self watering setup for it. But then again, I think I'm just gonna go ahead with these pots and a big decorative pot for it and just keep it outside because it's doing absolutely great. In the winter, I do bring it in. I'm not sure, I might do some research and see the uh, temperature tolerance of this orchid. If it tolerates low temperatures, maybe I'm gonna leave it on the staircase or something of the sorts. If not, I'm gonna bring it in. Um, he is beautiful, he's majestic, and that variegation is absolutely lovely. I just don't have blooms. Not entirely sure why. Again, I need to check a little bit the cultural needs. Maybe there's a trick with temperature that I'm not following. I will admit to you guys that I've been distracted by other orchids rather than the Grammatophyllum. The Grammatophyllum has always done great outside, so yeah, I just left it alone because he didn't bother me that much. But if I want flowers, I think I need to investigate a little bit the situation. But there he is. He is beautiful and majestic, the very old growth. Doesn't look spectacular. I guess I can cut these things out. But other than that, everything looks pretty great on it. It just needs repotting and I might do it soon. If you guys want me to make a video on it, let me know. I will definitely film some repottings soon. 
Next up in my last updates video, some of you commented that you wanted to see the Vandas, maybe a collection update. If I have new Vandas or I lost some Vandas, well, nothing much actually happened in the collection. I do have a pretty extensive Vanda collection that I need to bring inside in the winter time. And the reason why I didn't film the Vandas was one, they didn't actually do much. They kind of acclimated a little bit to the pots, which is okay. They are doing pretty great. And I do have some flower spikes to show you. But second and the main reason is that I keep them outside in a location which is very hard to film without showing you my neighbors and since it's a terrace I'm seeing inside their yard so I have no trees no like high fence nothing to shield that off and again it's so frustrating trying to film the Vandas from these really weird angles which don't even look good on camera I'm sure some of you are frustrated as well anyway it's the only location that I can use at the moment where the Sun is where I need it to be I typically don't film them in the summer I film them when I bring them in the greenhouse which will happen sometime in December I believe anyway I will be sure to make a collection update and talk more about Vandas then when I have them inside and I can film them in their whole glory they're doing okay they're quite big but I will film them more one of them that I really wanted to show you guys today is a newer one this is a trichoglottis atropurpurea I showed it to you in a community post at some point that it had some flower spikes. Well, finally they developed, but not all of them developed. So some of the little buds which were forming just dried. Um, maybe it has to do with the age of the orchid. It's the first time it is blooming. Maybe it has to do with some lack of watering. This orchid didn't actually have many roots in the pot. Now she put out some roots in the pot that grew but she didn't really have many roots for a while. I do see dehydration signs, so maybe it's a watering thing, but it's gonna get better. I'm trying to actively mist it more often just to make sure that these upper roots get some water as well. But some of the buds did manage to develop. So I have one, two, well, three, this one is open, four, which will open so I can show you the flowers. So one of them opened and it's so, pretty i like it so much this is a fragrant orchid as well it has a really sweet fragrance so far it opened for the past two days so i will give it more time in my orchids in bloom video i'll talk more about the fragrance and my observations but for now i really really like it and it's weird because i don't like purple but this is not purple this is a very dark red a really warm burgundy color. It's not purple, which is so great for me. I'm sure most other people absolutely love dark purple. I, I don't. Anyway, the worst thing with this orchid is the pattern of growth. It's not your typical Vanda, which puts out roots mostly at the bottom. No, can we see that we have roots right at the top here? Let me just give you a better angle. There we go. Look at this root, it's right near the top. So it's not your typical monopodial which puts out roots at the bottom and towards the top you will find the flower spikes. No, you can find buds pretty much all across its length and roots grow wherever they please. It can also have side shoots. I have a, should I call it a keiki? I have a side shoot here, yeah it's a keiki. It has a little root going towards the medium which is good and I think I saw another side shoot somewhere or is it just another root? There's another root here. I will say not the easiest orchid to manage, indeed. You do have to mist it or hose it pretty often and then try to make sure they have a lot of ventilation. So we'll see what we're gonna do in winter. Hopefully it's gonna be okay. If not, you know what? I'm just gonna put it inside the house where it's warm. I don't know, we'll see. It's an awkward orchid, but it's really, really beautiful. I just wish I had more roots in the medium just so it helps me out with watering a little bit more. Next up here we have some dual orchids. I showed you these guys a while back, I repotted them. And here's a little update, they're all doing great. I have a new addition which I'll talk about and one that I lost. So anyway, this is the Ladicia discolored, the Alba variety which is lacking the purple pigment. And look at that, she is so beautiful. I really, really like this version. Um, I don't know if it's harder to maintain or to care for than the normal variety. This one seems to be doing just fine. I used to have a different cutting of this one in the past and that one didn't do great. It didn't like my face, but this one does okay. And here's the Argentea and I'm just noticing I did not put tags on these guys, which is not great because this one has a name that I cannot remember at this point. I will put tags at the bottom of this. Oh, what did you see? 
think she saw a fly. By the way, that's the danger call of doves, if you didn't know. Anyway, so this is a Argentea, which is a type of jewel orchid I didn't know existed until I found it for sale, and it's beautiful. It is pretty silvery. It's not growing as fast as the Laodicea, definitely. I believe it's a little bit more finicky, but it does develop really nice and I have really nice leaves on it. So they're both doing great. This leaf was there when I purchased it, so it's not an indication of not enough moisture or things of the sorts. They're not super fussy. And lately, I really, really wanted to buy myself the Makota Sandariana, which is, I think, one of the most beautiful things I've ever seen. And I purchased that one together with this one, which is the Gold Makotas Petola. I don't know, I guess. And I did check, my Makotas doesn't have this, I guess, goldeny color on the back of the leaves. This one does, maybe it refers to the back of the leaves. Anyway, this guy is as finicky as the Makotas. I need to repot it, which I will fairly soon. It's not a fast grower and I cannot say it enjoys my presence all too much, so I try to leave it alone. Anyway, in that order, there was a Sandariana as well, but guess what, out of that order, which I made mainly for the Sandariana. The only casualty was the Sandariana. So yeah, I, I, am, I am so lucky sometimes. I, it's hard to put in words how incredibly lucky I can be. Anyway, so I'm still on the lookout for that one, but my jewel collection is getting a little bit bigger. I'm thinking to make a little bit of an arrangement with these guys. So yeah, do let me know if you want more jewel orchids content. And I think that's about it for now. Thank you guys so much for watching. Hope you've enjoyed hanging out with me and making these updates. If you want to see some other orchids that I didn't show you in a while, just leave me a comment down below. And in my next update, I'll try to talk about them. So with that said, I hope you have a great day. Subscribe to my channel for more orchid videos, tutorials, experiments, updates, and other fun orchid subjects. If you wish to support the channel, do consider becoming a member or visit the merch store linked down below in the description. You can also follow me on Instagram and Facebook. It's always nice to stay in touch there as well. And I'll see you all next time. Bye.